Today we have yet another fascinating integral that we're going to solve using a couple of really cool methods. The first one is Ramanujan's Master Theorem and the second is one of my personal favorites. It involves a parametrization using the gamma function. So here we have the integral from 0 to infinity of sine x by x to the s plus 1, where s here is a complex number with real part between negative 1 and 0. So first things first, we call our integral i, and we're going to try out our luck with the master theorem first. So according to this master theorem by the great Ramanujan, if we have a function f of x that can be expressed as an infinite series over the non-negative integers k of phi of k, where phi is some analytic or integrable function, phi of k divided by k factorial times negative x to the k, then the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 times f of x dx equals the gamma function evaluated at s times this function phi evaluated at negative s. Clearly we have some work to do before we can apply the result of this wonderful theorem. And for that first up notice that you can write i as the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the negative s plus 1 times sine x. So that means we're going to have to transform the sine of x term here into an infinite series of this structure. And in order to do that, first up we should recall the Maclaurin series expansion of sine x. So in this case, sine x equals the sum over the non-negative integers k of negative 1 to the k times x to the 2k plus 1 divided by 2k plus 1 factor. Now you can write this as the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times x to the 2k times x divided by 2k plus 1 factorial. And taking this one step further, we could just write this as x squared to the k. So you have x squared to the k and negative 1 to the k, so you can just combine them under the same exponent. So you have the sum over k of negative x squared to the k times x divided by 2k plus 1 factorial. And because this x term here is independent of the k variable or over which you're performing the sum, we can write this as x times the sum over k of negative x squared to the k divided by 2k plus 1 factorial. So plugging in this information into our integral, this implies that i equals the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the, it was negative s plus 1, right? Times this uh, sine function, which we're writing as x times the sum over k of negative x squared to the k divided by 2k plus 1 factorial. Okay, so we're close. We're much closer than where we started. All we need now is one transformation going from the x world to the t world. Transformation needed is letting x squared equal t, which implies that 2x dx equals dt. So this further implies that we can write i as the integral still from 0 to infinity because the limits of integration are clearly not bothered by our transformation. But you now have a t to the negative s plus 1 by 2 term here. And this x and dx combine to give you 1 half of the differential element dt. And you have the sum over k of negative t to the k divided by 2k plus 1 factorial. Now, we're almost there. We're just about to cross the finish line, but there's still a bit of work to do regarding this series expansion. Now, we can write this as the sum over k of negative t to the k to the one side, and we have this 2k plus 1 factorial, and we're going to multiply upstairs and downstairs by k factorial. So this means you have a sum of the form of the sum over the non-negative integers k of uh, k factorial divided by 2k plus 1 factorial times 1 by k factorial times negative t to the k. 
and remembering exactly what the um, mass, exactly what integral the master theorem related to, that was the integ the integral from zero to infinity of t to the s minus one times f of t, which had a very nice series expansion of the form of the sum over the non-negative integers k of phi of k times one by k factorial times negative t to the k integration with respect to t, and this sorted out to the gamma function evaluated at s and the function phi at negative s. Now all that's left is to decipher the structure of the function phi of k. Now looking at these two series expansions, well, we see that the function phi of k is obviously k factorial divided by 2k plus 1 factorial. So cool, we have the structure of the function phi of k, and we can apply the master theorem to say that i equals 1 half of the gamma function evaluated at what exact argument? Because we see in the standard integral for the master theorem, we need s minus 1. Whereas here we have negative s plus 1 by 2. So we need to figure out how we went from s minus 1 to negative s plus 1 by 2. Well, adding 1 on both sides will give you a transformation from s to uh, negative s minus 1 by 2. So that's the required argument for the gamma function as well as the function phi, which is uh, phi is k factorial divided by 2k plus 1 factorial. So, divide, so replacing k by this term here, we see that we have s minus 1 by 2 factorial where we've gotten rid of the negative sign because of the extra negative sign divided by 2 times this term, that's uh, the 2's cancel out, s minus 1 plus 1, s factorial down here. So now we have a very nice structure of gamma functions and factorials, and we know how to express factorials in terms of gamma functions, right? So s factorial is just gamma s plus 1, and by similar token, s minus 1 by 2 factorial is just the gamma function at s minus 1 by 2 plus 1, which is s plus 1 by 2. Okay, cool. So now we can write i as 1 half of the gamma function at negative s um, minus 1 by 2 times gamma s plus 1 by 2 divided by gamma s plus 1. So we've gotten this wild assortment of gamma functions that is actually quite nice to evaluate. Now you can write this as 1 by 2 times gamma s plus 1 times gamma s plus 1 by 2 times gamma negative s minus 1 by 2. And we can write this second gamma term here as gamma 1 minus s plus 1 by 2. So you have the structure required for Euler's wonderful reflection formula. So this implies that i equals 1 by 2 gamma s plus 1 times pi divided by sine of pi times this argument. So that sorts out to pi s by 2 plus pi by 2. And because of this phase shift of pi by 2, you now have, instead of a sine, you have a cosine term. So you have cosine pi s by 2. And using some wonderful trigonometric manipulation, you can get an even nicer result. So writing this as pi by gamma s plus 1 and 2 times the cosine of pi s by 2 down here, and multiplying upstairs and downstairs by gamma pi s by 2 sine pi s by 2. So that gives you the double angle formula for the sine function. So you can write this as pi divided by gamma s plus 1 times sine of pi s by 2 divided by the sine of pi s. Okay, cool. And we can get an even nicer result using, once again, Euler's wonderful reflection formula by noting that if you have gamma s plus 1 times gamma 1 minus, that's a horrible gamma hook there, 
Anyway, so you have gamma s plus 1 times gamma 1 minus s plus 1, which is just a gamma negative s term. So this evaluates to pi divided by the sine of pi s plus pi. And because of the phase shift of pi, we can write this as negative sine pi s. So that means um, all of this stuff here, all of this stuff that I'm going to point out as follows, um, pi divided by sine pi s times gamma s plus 1, this equals negative gamma negative s. So you have a very nice compact result here of your integral i being equal to negative gamma negative s times sine pi s by 2, which is quite a nice result. And now for the second evaluation of this integral. Now, were this an integration death battle between me and Ramanujan, where Ramanujan would employ his master theorem, I would clearly be the winner because just as I'm about to present my take or my favorite solution, Ramanujan is long dead. So yeah, that feels good. I just beat one of the greatest mathematicians in history, one of the goats of mathematics in an integration death battle. And I beat him by a long margin, by the way, because he's long dead. Anyway, so we can write this as the integral from zero to infinity of sine x times 1 by x to the s plus 1 dx. And now we're going to find an integral parameterization for this 1 by x to the s plus 1 term, quite similar or rather exactly the same as the time I evaluated the generalized Dirichlet integral as well as the gen generalized Fresnel integral. So if we have, if we define an integral i sub 1 as the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the s times e to the negative t, which we recognize as the gamma function, but we're going to pop in a parameter x here. And we're going to perform a substitution where we let x times t equal t u, which implies that t equals 1 by x times u, which implies that dt equals 1 by x times du. So that means i sub 1 is the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the s divided by x to the s times e to the negative u du by x. So we can factor out or we can take out these x terms because they're constants in the u world. And we have 1 by x to the s plus 1 times the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the s times e to the negative u du, which we recognize as the gamma function evaluated at s plus 1. So we have this nice relationship between the gamma function and the integral i sub 1 as well as 1 by x to the s plus 1. So this implies that 1 by x to the s plus 1 equals the reciprocal of gamma s plus 1 times the integral i sub 1, which was defined as that from 0 to infinity of t to the negative s times e to the negative x t dt. So this implies that we can write i as the integral from 0 to infinity of sine x times 1 by gamma s plus 1 times the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the negative s times e to the negative x t dt. And we have this outer integration with respect to x. And because the sine x term is independent of the t variable, we can just switch it. We can just slip it inside the uh, integration with respect to t operator. So we can write this as 1 by gamma s plus 1 because it's a constant in the t and x world times the double integral from 0 to infinity of sine x times t to the negative s times e to the negative x t integration first with respect to t and then with respect to x. And now for the golden question, can we switch up the order of integration? Well, we have sine x, which is a bounded function, no problem there. And we have t to the negative s, where the real part of s lies between negative 1 and 0. So again, no problems here either. And we have this damped exponential. We have this damping factor in the form of this exponential term. 
Okay, so yeah, there are no problems regarding boundedness or convergence. So by Fubini's theorem, we can indeed perform the switch up. So we're now integrating first with respect to x and then with respect to t. Now because we're integrating first with respect to x, this t to the negative s term can be taken out of the integration with respect to s operator. So we have gamma uh, 1 by gamma s plus 1 times the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the negative s times the integral from 0 to infinity of sine x times e to the negative xt integration with respect to x and we have this outer integration now with respect to t and this integral here is quite easy to evaluate you can use basic complex analysis or you can use integration by parts and you'll get 1 by 1 plus t squared and you have this t to the negative s term as well we're integrating with respect to t from 0 to infinity and we have this 1 by gamma s plus 1 term outside too. So this is cool and all we need is one more substitution so that we get something we're quite familiar with. So if we let t squared equal u, which implies that t equals u to the 1 half, which further implies that dt equals 1 half times u to the negative 1 half du, this implies that our integral now in the u world is 1 by gamma s plus 1 times the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the negative s by 2 times u to the negative 1 half. And oh, this factor of 1 half as well. And we can write this as u to the negative s plus 1 by 2. Okay, cool divided by 1 plus u du. And we recognize this as the integral representation of Euler's wonderful reflection formula. So we have 1 by 2 gamma s plus 1 times pi divided by sine of pi times, um, wait, let's pick the uh, biggest braces outside and the curly braces inside, sine of pi times uh, this argument here, negative s plus 1 by 2 plus 1. Okay, nice. And this sorts out to s plus 1 by 2. Okay, cool. So we're rid of that negative sign. We still have the s plus 1 by 2. And multiplying by pi, we'll get pi s by 2 plus pi by 2. And because of the, because of the phase shift, we have a cosine term. Okay, nice. So we've got cosine pi s by 2 downstairs. And once again, performing the same trig manipulations followed by some gamma manip manipulations, we find that i equals negative gamma negative s times sine pi s by 2. Indeed, a wonderful integral evaluating to a wonderful result through two awesome methods. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe, comment down your favorite technique, and thank you, see you next time.